welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And uh, today I'm going to be have a look, going to be having a look at a puzzle rather cheekily titled "Cheeky Debugger" by Prime Weasel. And uh, I think it's called that because it has a sort of indexing style to it, which might be familiar to programmers. Um, Simon's pointed me in the direction of this puzzle. Very interesting rule set. No digits in the grid. Classic. Um, quite a few circles and squares, but they're not normally enough to do the whole grid. Anyway, we shall have a look at that in a moment. I do want to uh, mention, of course, all our apps and our merchandise going very well at the moment. Thank you if you've bought something lately. Do do tweet us a picture of you wearing it. <laughs> Some people have. Thank you. Um, and uh, we're delighted that it's going so well. Now, the book seems to be arriving across all of North America now. We're hoping it gets to Europe shortly um, for all the people who ordered it on the Kickstarter. Once all the deliveries have occurred, we hope to make it available again for anybody else who hasn't bought it yet. But that hasn't happened yet. Um, so thank you for the compliments about the book as well. They're very, very well received, I have to say. Now... What else have we got going on? Well, on Patreon, we have the monthly, well, it's a sort of puzzle hunt, a Mexican standoff, a three-way duel that has to be resolved, and loads of answers coming in. Very well done to all of those. Uh, there is other stuff on Patreon there. We try to keep the content coming. Not quite sure when we're streaming yet. I'd like to get feeling better still, although things are improving. Thank you to people who have uh, wished me well in regards to my health. Anyway, let's get on to this puzzle and look at the rules. So, circles are odd digits, squares are even digits. That's normal enough. Now, what's not normal, normal Sudoku rules apply, that's normal. What's not normal is that for every digit X in a cell in box Y, so let's imagine this was a two, no, let's pick a different digit, actually. Let's pick a 7, and there is a reason I'm picking a 7. Um, for every digit X in a cell in box Y... Now, this is box number 6. The, it's important here, I think, how we number our boxes. So let me just do that first of all. That's box number 1, 2, 3. We'll get rid of this 7 for a moment. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine. Those are the box numbers that we use as standard. Uh, so, for every digit X in a cell in box Y, I'm just going to get rid of those numbers. So we'll put that 7 back. That is a 7 in box 6. And the rule is that there is a digit Y in the same position in box 6. So there is a 6 in the same position in box 7. And that's here, because this is box 7, and middle top is the same position as there, or position two. Um, so that's a really interesting reflective rule set. I don't know what impact that is going to have on this grid. I have done one or two puzzles before, possibly not on the channel, in which that applied for each row. So the position in the, if you had a, a three here, it meant that number this is column two, so two would appear in column three, and three in column two. And there, in the rows, they all formed up in little partnerships, apart from one in each row. I don't know if that works here. And what I'm saying is I don't know if a disjoint subset rule set applies, where all of these positions always have to be different. Like, that would be a set of the digits 1 to 9. I don't... I mean, it's certainly not stated in the rules, so I'm not going to assume it. Um, right, let's get cracking and see how we go. Do try it on the link under the video. Um, I mean, we can't put anything in. That's clear. We've only got some circles and squares. The squares all seem to be in the top rows of their boxes, apart from a couple of them. Maybe we need to focus on positions in boxes. Ah, and different ones. Look at these. Right, these are all in what you could call position six or middle right in the box. 
and so is that. Do, do these have to, I think these have to be a set of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Oh no, hang on. Yes, they probably do. God, this is complicated. Sorry, I need to just think about this. Is that right? Are these a set of different digits? I think they are. And the reason I'm going to say this is a set of the five odd digits, one, three, five, seven, and nine, is because if any of them pointed, if, if two of them were the same, like in theory, those two could be both ones, but they would both be telling you that that cell in box one had a digit that referred back to both boxes. So that would have to be a sort of Schrodinger cell that had a two and a nine in it, if those two both had a one in. And that's not possible. So I think that logic applies, and I don't think it's destroyed by self-referential cells. They, the same rule applies to them. So I think here we've got a set of the digits one, three, five, seven, and nine. I'm gonna color those cells. Now, does that mean that these are now 2, 4, 6, and 8? No, actually, no. These are in boxes 2, 4, and 8. Ah, so the numbers that are in boxes 2, 4, and 8 will refer to these numbers, which are these box numbers, which are... Sorry. What I mean is these box numbers are 2, 4, and 8. That is going to put the numbers 2, 4, and 8 into, um, yes, not, hang on, 2, 4, and 8. Yes, that's going to put whatever digits appear. These, these boxes in which I've highlighted the remaining positions that aren't this square one are boxes 1, 5, and 7. And I think that means that these positions in boxes 2, 4, and 8 are occupied by 1, 5, and 7. And these in boxes 1, 5, and 7 are occupied by 2, 4, and 8. And those numbers will pair up. That must be right. This from the original 13579 set is left to be a 3 9 pair, and this must be a 6, because again, it can't refer to boxes 2, 4, and 8, even though it's got an even number in it, because that box now can't refer back to it with a 6, because these can't have a 6 in. Wow, that's wildly. I, I've either incredibly overcomplicated that in my mind, or it is complicated. Now, what about this 3 and 9? I don't think we can resolve them. They either refer to each other, so that the 9 up here says in box 9, you get a 3 down here, which refers back to it, or they're self-referential, in which case, like the 6, which is in box 6, that could be a 3 and that could be a 9. I don't think that's resolved. So I think the key thing here was that we found different shapes in the same positions. Now, does that apply anywhere else? And I maybe, no, that's the only bottom right cell with a shape in. Okay, but these bottom middles, oh right, there's five of them again. So I think, again, those are the digits, one, three, five, seven, nine, in another set. Let's color them red this time. And that, yes, this is box one, and this is box nine. So the ones, so the one and the nine that appear here in boxes in the even numbered boxes, in boxes four and six, refer to what must be a four and six in those two positions, signaled by a one and nine in these two positions. So that might be a one and that would be a four, and that would be a nine and that would be a six, and they'd refer to each other, or it's the other way around. That could be a nine and that a four, that a one and that a six. Anyway, that's taken one nine out of this set 
of cells, does that mean these have to be 2 and 8? Yes, I think it does. They can't be another odd number or you'd get the Schrodinger problem with wherever that number appeared here. They can't be 4 or 6 for the same reason. So they are 2 and 8. Again, we don't know if they are self-referential, so that's a 2 and that's an 8, or if they refer to each other the other way around. Right, but I think we've got a handle on how to do this now. And look, we get the middle left. There's another set of odd digits. That is, in fact, the remaining circles. So let's make them blue. I've used all the primary colours now. They are a set of 13579 again. Which ones are in even-numbered boxes? That and that. So four boxes, four and eight, are in use there. So the numbers four and eight appear in the remaining odd-numbered boxes, which are three and seven. So those two digits are a three and a seven. This is weird. This is really playing with my understanding of numbers. So those three become a 159 triple because 3 and 7 have been used up in the set there. I honestly don't think we can tell much more about which is which. That could be a set where if that was a... this They could each be self-referential. So that was a 1, that's a 5, that's a 9. Or this could be a 9 and that would be a 1, and that would be a 5. Ah, now I've just had the interesting thought that applies to the version I talked about where I'd done this for the rows. But, okay, here's a knowledge bomb. In each box, its own number only appears once. Now that's totally obvious, of course. In box 1, there is only one 1. That's part of basic Sudoku rules. But it is interesting. It has an application here. It means <coughs> that there's only one position in each box which can be self-referential. And that might mean that for every position in the boxes, only one of them can be self-referential and the others must pair up. I think it probably does mean that. And I think that means that a disjoint subset rule does apply. But I have to admit, I'm not 100% sure. What I'm going to do instead is look at these squares. And we get, look, yeah, we get three, four even cells in position two in the middle top. So again, they must be a set of two, four, six, eight. Let's colour them green. Um... And they're in boxes 3, 4, 5, and 9. So the ones that are in even boxes... No, hang on, have I got that right? Yeah, 3, 4, 5, and 9. I thought they'd only be... Oh, so one of them is... One of these is self-referential. Two of them form a pair, and one of them... No, hang on, they're in boxes 3, 4, 5, and 9. Oh, so three of them refer to boxes 2, 6, and 8 and place digits there. The other one must be in its own box, and it must be box 4. So that's a 4. Those three, it's a bit like that set of three digits that we identified at the start, 1, 5, and 7. Here we've got 2, 6, and 8. And they are referring to the set of digits in those box numbers, which are 3, 5, and 9. And then we get a 1, 7 pair here that are either self-referential. Well, they're probably not. If my theory about the disjoint subsets is right, they refer to each other. But anyway, look, I've just noticed that's a 1, 7 pair looking at that cell. So that can't be a 1. That's a 9. And that means we get a 4 down here, makes this a 1, which gives us a 6 up here. And that's all done now. Now there is one more set. Well, there's one more odd bottom right. But look, there's a set of top lefts. 
So they are the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8 again in boxes, all in odd number boxes, 1, 3, 5, 9. So the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8 appear in boxes 1, 3, 5, 9. So the numbers 1, 3, 5, 9 must appear in boxes 2, 4, 6, 8. And the other one must be a 7, referring to itself. So that's a 7. I haven't used this cell yet, but maybe we'll get to that. But it's made this a 1. That makes this a 7. They were just a pair, though, so that doesn't really help. This can't be a 1 now. I'm hoping that this will come down to Sudoku once we get these possibilities. This can't be a 7. So, ah, and that is therefore a partner either with box 3 or box 5. I don't know which. Um, what else have I achieved anywhere by Sudoku? Not much. Maybe I'm just missing something. Hang on. Need to look around. Oh, yes, this has become a 3 because of that 7. Right. So that's saying that in box 3 we get a 4. And those are a little pair of partners. Now, 4 there means these aren't 4s. That's not a 4. Uh, that's a set of 2, 4, 8, but it's not been resolved. Now, I, I should have highlighted these as a colour. Let's make those orange just to keep track of those numbers. Um, 7, 6, 4, 9, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Yeah, I want to keep moving around this, but I'm not quite sure how. I suppose one of these has to be a 7 by Sudoku because of the 7s we've got in columns 1 and 2. And that means that in box 7, one of these is a 5. No, a 4. Ah, that's helpful, because this is box 4, so whichever 7 is here is going to be matched by a partner that is saying, look at box 4 here. That is good, because if 4 is in one of those three cells, this one is an 8. And that is in box 7, so we get a 7 here. Actually, I could have worked that out when I got that as a 3. But this is now not a 7. It's in box 8, and it's saying there's an 8 either there or, oops, or there. Now I've got a 7 in one of those two positions by Sudoku. That's going to put a 9 in one of these two positions. That doesn't really solve anything. Um... I'm very okay. That can't be a four anymore. Ah, so in the orange set, the only that's now a two, six, eight triple. So that's a four, and that's going to partner with box one. So that's a one. Now there's a one in one of those two positions, but that's a self-referential one. The trail always kinds of die, kind of dies with a self-referential number. But we get a four in one of those two, and that's in box two. So that puts a 2 in one of those cells. Um, ah, we've got a 4 there, so that's not 4. And that means this isn't 7. So 7's now in one of those two. That doesn't get anything done. Um, this is still a bit strange, I have to say. So 2, 6, 8. Yeah, this was a set of 1, 3, 5, 9, wasn't it? And we've got the 1 now, so those can't have a 1 in. What about this set? There, 1, 5, 9. Can't see anything there. Orange are 2, 6, 8. Wow, I'm not finding this straightforward to still understand. Um... Oh, that can't be a 1, because of this 1, obviously. Uh, so that's a 5 or 7. That's referring to either 
this position or this as a four. One of those is a four. I guess I kind of knew that already because they're in a set. Yeah, I think a lot of this is going to be... Oh, this can't be a one either. Both of those still can be, so that's not really advancing us. That is two, five, or nine. Maybe I do need to look outside the sets I've already been looking at. That's going to put a one either there, there, or there. Well, it's not going to be there, so it's not a five. That's going to give us a one in one of those positions with a reciprocate. Yeah, that one is going to reciprocate either that two or nine. So now we're getting a six in one of these two positions in boxes for ah, but that can't be a six because that would make this a four and that C's a four. So that's not a six. So the six in column one is here and that's going to fix the nine. So that six says there's a seven in box six. That nine says there's a seven in box nine. That checks out. That's all right. Um, this can't be a 7 anymore. Ah, and that's a 3-5 pair now, so this is a 7. And that is referring to box 7, so I can put a 3 there, and now the 5 is self-referential. I can take 5 out of a few cells, I might be able to do more. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing stuff as it becomes available here. This, interestingly, is 2, 8, or 5 for the column. Now, even without thinking about what that means in boxes 2, 5, and 8, it gives me a quadruple. So this becomes a 1, 3 pair. And that means, since one of those is a 3, that there's a 1 in one of these two cells. That actually gives me a 1x wing, looking back at the other one, and puts a 1 in one of these three in box 2 which puts a 2 in one of those three in box 1 and means that's not a 2. That's a that's bizarre how this logic works. So I get a 5 and a 9 there. I can finish that off as a 2. Now that 2 puts a 6 here, and that resolves where 4 is. Hang on, hang on. Something's gone wrong there. It can't put a 6 there. So what went wrong there? Let's go back here. This is actually a naked single 2, but that can't be a 6. Oh, that's not box 6. That's the problem there. I miscounted my boxes. That's box 4. Right. So let's just... OK, let's do this by naked singling. That's a 2 because it sees a 5 and a 9 in its row and everything else in the column. So 9, 5, there. That 2 is in box Four. So we get a 4 in box 2. That's fine. This 9 needs a 1 in the same position in box 9. This 5 needs a 1 in the same position in box 5. So there. This must be a 9 because of the blue set. That makes this a 3 and that makes this a 9. Um, this can't be a five anymore. That yellow set is not resolved though. That nine, yeah they have done that in box nine. This can't be an eight. We've got a two or a five here which is going to put a seven either there or there. Oh, I've just noticed a two eight pair in that column. That makes this a six which puts a Five in that position in box six there. Let's tidy up some of the pencil marks at least. Um, I've also got a three nine pair, so I've got one four and seven to place in the central column. I'm gonna have a go. Oh look, that gives me a one seven pair up here. So then I've got three and six. I know I'm slightly avoiding doing the thinking about the reciprocal placements, but that's that feels more complicated, frankly, uh, than Sudoku to me. 
This is two or six. In fact, that's a one, two, four, five quad. So this is six. That is going to put a nine in that position in box six, which is here. The six makes this a three, which makes that a six. That three is in box three. That six is in box two. So we get a two there in box six, which is here and helpful. Um, five, six, four. So in fact, this position has been fully filled in the grid with a set of one to nine, as I suspect we're going to get in every position. Um, now, this is two, four, or five. Putting a seven in that position in either box, two, where it can't be, or four or five, where it can be. So that is a four or five. Um, six by Sudoku goes here. And that says that this in box six is a four. That means we can finish off eight and three there. That eight is, says in box eight, we get a six. That three says in box three, we get a six. And this is all apparently working now, which is marvelous. Um, that's an eight. This must be a two to complete the orange set. These are a two eight pair now. Either, oh, in fact, we know which way around they go, thanks to this very helpful orange eight that we just put in. That's a five to complete the column. I'm hoping the rest can be done by classic Sudoku. Five, two, eight, six, one, seven, three, nine pair. That's a four. That does that triple. This pair unwinds. Got two, five, and eight down here. Ooh, looks like I might have to get back into the rule to figure them out. That's a naked single seven. Then we can do five and eight. That fixes two and eight up there. This one seven has been resolved by the one down here. This is now a seven. That must be a four. Nine in the central box is there and a three eight pair still to go. This has to be even, but I've still got two or eight as possible. But at least that fixes the rest of rows one and three in boxes one and three. Three, five there. So some of this must be done now. Now, if that was a three, it would put a two here. That's exactly what does happen. Right, so that sorts all that out. And I think we're finished now. Two, eight. I mean, I do want to just check some of this. I did make one mistake along the way in identifying a box number. But I think that is, it's remarkable that that can be put together as a puzzle. Who would have known that that kind of relation could apply? But I just want to first of all check. Let, let's just have a look at top lefts, for instance. So the evens were marked in the original grid. Again, it's a set of the numbers one to nine. In fact, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I think they must form up into pairs with one self-referential. So four and two are looking at each other's box. Six and eight the same. No, that's not six and eight. Six is looking at three. Three and six are looking at each other. Eight and nine are looking at each other. And then we have one I got it wrong at the start. Four and two are not looking at each other. Four and one are looking at each other, there and there. Two and five are looking at each other. Six and three. Nine and eight, and then seven's on its own. And I think we can take any position, and there'll be four pairs looking at each other, and one single looking at itself. So one and three are looking at each other. Two is itself, uh, eight and five are looking at each other, six and four, seven and nine, just leaving two. And I'm just gonna test out one more time with the middle cells. So six and nine are looking at each other, seven and five 
are ref indexing each other. One and two, three is on its own. Eight is indexing four, three is on its own. So that is fascinating. It's a disjoint subset with one digit obviously in its correct box each time and the others forming pairs. Really, that's fascinating. I mean, it's it's almost more intriguing than puzzling, if you like. It's like, how can that be a relation that must apply or that can apply in a Sudoku? And how did Prime Weasel find it and use it? And all he's given us is a few odds and evens and we can finish that. It's so peculiar to me. Really interesting puzzle, really interesting rule set. One of those where, I don't know, it fries the brain a bit. I don't want to do too many puzzles like that because it's a bit confusing, but I've really enjoyed a foray into what was going on there. Hopefully we've debugged that successfully and not too cheekily. And uh, thank you very much, as always, for watching us on the channel. Bye for now.